Hi guys, I'm Elise and you're watching the IFLS show, which this week is brought to you by the nice people over at Audible. This week in paleontology, scientists have discovered what they describe as the chicken from hell. This is Anzu Wiley, a name that literally means feathered demon, a theropod oviraptorosaur that roamed the earth during the late Cretaceous period. This guy is thought to have weighed 300 kilograms and been around three and a half meters long. This is pretty exciting as, until now, the only Oviraptorosaurus fossils we had were very incomplete. The three specimens that were analysed this week collectively made up nearly an entire skeleton, allowing us to learn a lot more about them. It lived 66 to 68 million years ago in a hot and humid climate that's kind of similar to modern Louisiana. It was an omnivore, meaning it would have eaten plants and maybe small animals. Next, for the very first time, astronomers have detected waves somewhere other than Earth. NASA's Cassini spacecraft recently completed its 100th flyby of Saturn's largest moon, Titan. Titan has vast lakes and oceans of liquid hydrocarbons like methane. These lakes and oceans have always been eerily smooth, which is weird considering huge sand dunes on the surface point to strong winds. Cassini spotted specular reflections of the sun, or glints of sunlight off the surface of one of Titan's seas. These tiny reflections may come from tiny ripples no more than a couple of centimetres high. Cassini also observed a strange island in another sea that appeared then disappeared. It looked like a bright reflection in one image, but it hasn't been found in any photograph since. Astronomers concluded that it was probably a set of waves or a group of bubbles riding up from below the surface. So there you have it, oceanography is no longer an earthbound science. Modern Venus is pretty much hell. Surface temperatures reach a whopping 460 degrees Celsius and it's constantly veiled by clouds of sulfuric acid, making catching a glimpse of the surface pretty difficult. Volcanoes are thought to have played a big part in its geological history, but now new evidence suggests it might still have active volcanoes. Four bright flashes were observed in a relatively young rift zone, which were estimated to be up to 800 degrees Celsius, which is way hotter than the normal surface temperature of Venus. They were observed near Venus's largest volcano, which is thought to have erupted last tens of millions of years ago. Further analysis of these bright spots suggests that they could be lava flows or a volcanic hotspot. The team are currently scanning through more images to look for other areas of possible volcanic activity in the planet's surface. This week in biology, zombie moss. Well, sort of. Scientists have managed to revive moss after it spent 1500 years frozen in the permafrost. Until now, the record was just 20 years. The only organisms that have been previously been revived on a millennial time scale have been bacteria and viruses, which are generally much tougher. The researchers extracted the frozen moss cores and then carefully incubated portions, providing optimal light and temperature. The moss began to grow a few weeks later. Carbon dating puts the moss at 1,530 years old, and the team estimates that the plants were a few decades old when the permafrost set in. This durability could help to maintain biodiversity as small ice ages come and go, like the little ice age in Europe. Finally, the big news this week, the massive news, the news of the year, scientists have detected the imprint of gravitational waves from the Big Bang. Unless you've been living under a rock this week, you've probably heard all about this. The finding is the first direct proof of the theory of inflation, which is the idea that the universe expanded extremely quickly in the first fraction of a nanosecond after it was born. The background imaging of Cosmic Extragalactic Polarization 2 experiment at the South Pole found a pattern called primordial B-mode polarization in cosmic background microwave radiation, which is the radiation left over from the Big Bang. This pattern could only have been created by gravitational waves produced by inflation. Albert Einstein first predicted these gravitational waves nearly 100 years ago, but these results are much stronger than he or anybody else could have predicted. The discovery has already been tipped for a Nobel Prize. So, that is all the science from me this week, but as I mentioned at the start, Audible have been kind enough to sponsor this episode. Now, what that means for you guys is if you go to www.audible.com forward slash IFLS, you get a free audiobook download of your choice. They've got more than 150,000 books to choose from, you've got fiction and non-fiction, and the science section is really, really great. Personally, I recommend checking out Demetria Kaku's new book, Future of the Mind which I read this month and I really, really enjoyed. So hopefully you guys will too. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next week.